Sure. We are the back. We are here. <clears throat> so let's see. 74. Study Monday. Good morning, Aksky. How are thee? How are thou? Let's switch that off for a second. I need to. Uh, Seventy-four. All right, switch that back on. Hmm. 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 Weeping Jay, how are you? Good morning. Happy Monday. How fantastic isn't that? We're going to do Study Monday. Good old fashioned Study Monday. Hey, Sarah. How's it going? How are you? I hope everything is fine. Today, we're going to do Study Monday. Hey, Stone. The Hero John, you're back. 2020. <laughs> nice nickname change. Right, so the idea is... Um, um, that... Good morning, Captain Bolt. I hope your weekend was fine. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, Captain Bose, bruh. <laughs> 16 months. Thank you very much. Truly appreciate it. My weekend was good. Um, a lot of work in terms of dealing with my daughter. But um, we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but there's still lots of shit we don't know, and it's messing with my mind. <laughs> the hero John. Oh, I know. I remember. All right. So, what I suggest we're going to try is... Today on today um, on this warm up, we're gonna practice um, planes more or less. Oh. Hey, Bruno Romanos! Oh shit, seventeen months! Oh crazy, that's crazy. You two soon have a full year, two years. Yeah, planes. So what we're gonna do is. Use a hard brush, meaning zero opacity. Hey, Zelen. So we're going to go full on blast, zero uh, transparency. So we're going to just go color, block of color, right? And the idea is if we do a posturize, we're going to ideally end up something like that but uh, more like that, right? So we're gonna try to see the colors, see the planar shifts. Uh, if you like look at the mod mo model, modeling of the nose, you know, try to block it in correctly with the different values, but we can't have gradients, right? I think we could, we, yeah, we can't have gradients, so we got to compartmentalize the values, separate them, and make a volume based on, on planar differences. Captain Bose, yeah, flat colors, exactly, more or less. Yeah, so let's go. Let's start. Let's do the practice.
and of course we're gonna have to try to eyeball the colors and I made mine significantly way too cool All right off to a good start <laughs> right so I'm gonna use a brush like this uh, that changes size the more I, I press so the idea behind this practice is um, I'm gonna first I'm gonna try to map out uh, approximately where she is but the, the, the idea behind this practice is, um, is to force you to look at the value differences and force you to um, stop using unnecessary subtleties. So the end goal of the practice is that um, you, you will teach yourself more or less the less is more right the, the idea here is that I see a lot of tendencies I mean me included um, Captain Boss yeah it's very hard for this uh, so the idea here is because I see a lot of people do this mistake I, I do this I'm I'm a culprit of this as, as well at times is that when we render something we render it to death we over explain things we make values too complicated and when they're too complicated and too um, like messy what happens is um, is that we 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 um, dilute, I guess, what we want to say with the drawing, and what it end up when the, what it end up being is uh, just confusion. So this this practice. Um, forcing you to block everything into cleaner, stronger blocks of values will aid you um, when you are um, rendering a piece. Because if you do this enough times, you, first of all, you're going to see the result and that it usually, if you're lucky, the result will show that the read is very strong, like the volumetric read is very strong. Hey, AG Brood. Yeah, it's the same principle. It's the same principle. Hey, Miguel, how's it going? So anyone want to do this practice? You just type apostrophe ref, like so, and you get the reference. Hopefully it will work. Yeah, it will work. And uh, you can do the same thing. So again, the basic idea here is uh, is to simplify the values, focus on the planes, no gradients, all hard brush, and um, try to. Uh, make the, the, the forms and the planes of the face uh, come across correctly. So what I'm, f what I'm doing first is I'm just blocking out the overall uh, things here so that I can start having any somewhere to, to start with, right? And uh, there is a lot of people um, commenting on 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 things like this you know I'm not the only one um, who makes this mistake and I'm also not the only one who um, who brings it up as a thing that people do as a uh, in terms of a bad practice 
because it's such a common thing that that people do this so I thought uh, it would be a good thing to study and bring out in the open um, to show how to combat this uh, problem because it's very evident uh, in a lot of artists when they render that um, the separation between the planes the separation between light side and shadow side is really really um, how to say it um, diluted I guess or um, undefined which is lit and which is in shadow and I think I think Mike Avazito, I've talked about this before, uh, but he had a really good comment about rendering a, a long time ago, and that was about um, that you you need to uh, trunk truncate the values so that um, you don't try to use the full gradient um, when you render that you should group the values and, and simplify. Let's say every 10% of the value range becomes one value. So instead of 100 different levels of volume, value, you get 10. And with these 10, you can um, start defining and uh, pushing, right? So the idea is, let's say, let's say six out of these 10 values um, are on the lit side and then um, four out, out of those values are um, shadow so instead of 40 different kind of values trying to um, To describe the shadow side of a form you have four values and it's this, the same principle here what I, we're I'm trying to to do um, is the, that you gotta kind of simplify and and make it read rather than just being lost in that notion completely off. Should be like there. So what it forces you to do is to, to just observe more and 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 uh, make or s make stronger decisions and, and be bolder and forcing your mind to understand what it's looking at because you're, you're now in the study going to try to uh, you know paint it <laughs> with no means of adding gradients and you can't sit and do hard brush gradients right you're going to have to try to simplify and make it read well And it's, and it's going to look quite messy. But that's, I think, that's one of those things that you got to start accepting uh, when doing studies. It's not so much about getting a pretty picture. It's about learning something.
I wish I could get my imagination out of my head to a painting. I guess a lot easier, not a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is a common mistake uh, or a common, not mistake, sorry, common problem. But what you gotta what you gotta understand is is it it kind of keys into one thing that uh, uh, a person was writing on the Discord over the weekend, like this this person was complaining about uh, like their their defeat like defeatist mentality, right? That they felt like oh I will never be good or I can never reach where I want to reach I can never you know accomplish what I want to accomplish in the artistically and what people need to realize is that getting good at something so complicated and with so many different facets and with so many different possibilities and that's so unique to each artist uh, that it takes time to get where you need to go you can't just want results instantly uh, and you have to be able to cherish the ride and enjoy the struggle you, you have to you know like um, be a little bit um, a sucker for punishment <laughs> but it's true It, it shouldn't be easy, right? Because if it's easy, then everyone would do it and then everyone would be a great artist. Everyone can be a average artist because even though it's still hard, it's not impossible to be average. Usually what happens is when, when, you, when you give up, um, you haven't had the, the right... Um, I mean, it could be many things for the reasons why one gives up in the pursuit of art, but um, it's important to remember that it's not overnight, it's a long road. And for me, what makes, what makes it all worth it is having fun. And a lot of people forget, uh, you know, like with the, the whole grind and you gotta get good and uh, you you can only show your best work and all these things and th I don't think it's, that's necessarily true you know like it's so important to to have fun to show that you're having fun enjoying cr being creative and yes you can you can you will always compare your your output with other artists so on but But in the end of it, end of it, you know, the, those artists that you compare yourself to, if they're having fun and just enjoying, and you are just complaining, they are naturally going to get better. And also, you can also consider why you are doing art. You know, what's the reason for it? Miguel, I will share with us. Share. The hero John. Well, th that's great. Like, like I said, I, I'm 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 self-taught, right? I've I've lear learned to do art myself. There's no one who who been guiding me in particular. You know, I didn't go to art school and all these things, and I've naturally. Um, enjoyed colors, right? I have a, let's say, an affinity for colors. Not affinity, that sounds weird, but uh, a joy of, of using colors. And um, I was analyzed by, by an, uh, a professional illustrator once uh, when I was uh, a lot younger and when I was just kind of starting out. 
and he said that I use um, uh, what's it called um, a triangle classic triangle um, color theory but I always the third color is always um, off which I found interesting uh, and this guy said for some reason even though it's broken I make it work and I, I made it work just because I've had fun um, painting that way for quite some time and that it uh, I've just you know through enjoyment found a way uh, to to even though I've broken the the rules I've made it work uh, purely on the fact that I'm just had just had fun painting for all this you know all those years of trying to learn which I found interesting you know, which I I find to be true you know um, that hard work is important to to uh, to move ahead to move forward in the art world but fun is is significantly more important and enjoyment <laughs> this is so so fun to do it looks horrible <laughs> but it's fun Miguel that's great I've actually I actually saw that on um, on your um, Uh, what's it called? What's the call it? Instagram. That's cool. So I, I, I as I understand, it was in the evening, nine in the evening. Yet another great artist joins the ranks to Twitch. That's good. And you're also a great guy. Uh, this is going to be fun seeing uh, what you get up to. Uh, Bruno Romanos, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if you don't have fun, then you're already hating the process. And uh, I think this this culture that is in the industry today about, uh, I mean, it's partly my fault as well because by default, you know, being a hard worker, I I show this this behavior publicly, you know that hard work pays off and and you know you got to do the grind if you want to get anywhere and all these things right but that's that's only part of the truth the big part that people don't see also is because I paint a lot all the time I draw a lot all the time and I'm sitting and coming up with fun things and strange things and I, I, I sit and consider 
you know, what if I draw this and I draw it? And what if, how can I make this work? And I sit and have fun and, and I'm, I even laugh at my own drawings occasionally and, and all these things, right? But you don't, you don't, you know, really see that from my art station profile. But nevertheless, it's true, you know, that I sit and, and, and have a lot of fun creating. And I, I can't wait to sit down again to draw or come up with something interesting or have a, a thought that sparks my imagination and go, wow, I want to, you know, just sit and draw something cool. Or this idea I had about a robot, I, you know, or whatever. But if I if I would instead go like, oh no, Marko Djurjevic is better than me, I better go and learn, you know. That wouldn't be fun, that would be pressure, that would be a uh, no, non-constructive like point of, like initial start of what I need to do, right? It's not that I need to be better than Marko Djurjevic. I need to reach I, you know, I need to reach his level on my terms, not beat him. You know, that's just a measuring device I have created for myself in order to stay motivated or, uh, or remind myself of quality or whatever. Not so much that I need to be able to be at, to be him or be at that level because that's, that's pointless. It's just as a reminder, you know, of where I, how I need to stay focused, not so much that I need to be, you know, how good I need to become or anything like that. Because truly to be able to sit for years and years and be creative and years and years to just sit in the grind if I didn't enjoy it I would have walked away a long time ago it's so important to have fun when you're creative because it does drain you so much and it does tax um, your energy and it does break you down and it, you know. <laughs> it's not easy at all. So if you're miserable at the same time, it, you know, you're, it's going to be short lived. And I see a lot of you do studies and a lot of you like you're really in the grind, but I don't see a lot of um, pet projects or, or uh, a lot of saying, here's something fun I did, uh, you know, here was, here's me playing around with colors or I see a lot of I gotta get good grind which is great but also a bit uh, sad You'll be doing pole dancing. Oh, yeah. Giggity. Like, for me, I know what, like, what I love to draw. Every time I draw it, I just have fun. And I, I, I mean, like, I'm impatient to see where um, where the drawing will end up as soon as I start drawing 
on the, in that subject. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be so much fun. You know, yet another drawing in this genre. And I'm just, you know, enjoying creating things based on that genre. And I, I throw everything out the window in terms of performance and technique or, uh, you know, any thought in terms of, you know, what I've practiced or I just sit down and, and I'm creative. And I found that I find that the, those drawings where I where I sit down more and uh, and just be creative and enjoying what I'm what I'm drawing. Um, those are the ones I look back at years later and go, well, man, these were so much fun to draw. And and no, I know that during that period. I also have done study. I've also done, um, you know, X, Y, Z uh, practices, and but I don't even remember them, right? But when I do see those those favorite genre things where I just kick back and have fun, I can I can almost tell them, you know, wake me up <laughs> when I'm drunk and ask me. What's your my favorite drawings? And I can go, yeah, this one, that one. I had lots of fun drawing this one. And but if you ask me, what's Anatomy Study Fifty Seven? Or you know, they're bored, boring. You know, they're they're purely done for tightening the skill. And if you only tighten the skills, uh, you can see it in a lot of work as well. Is that a lot of people's work? Is that it's soulless? There's no, there's no person behind it, right? It's just dead. And it's a bit too much of that uh, a lot of times, uh, in a lot of beginners online and so on. Um, there's not enough voice. But I get it as well. I have not everyone have a voice um, because you're learning you know, to use the tools. But it's important to still have fun because if you look at, let's take an artist like Finian McManus, right? He's a environment artist for Avatar 2 and big Hollywood movies, right? He was a rookie for, or a noob for a very long time, but he was always interested in doing a fantastic environments and he posted them regardless of his skill level, right? So he always posted his experiments, his tests, his, uh, you know, failed drawings, but he still had fun doing them and he always posted them and he always shared them. And with time, because he had a passion and uh, he had fun, his learning curve was really, really fast and really, really high. Um, you know, because passion and skill, he managed to merge the two. And it's, he's not unique in ha having that ability. It's just that people need to be aware of it and aware that having fun and passion makes grinding so much more easier and faster and more, more, uh, more pinpoint accuracy where, where you need to put the effort in. That's why I always say, you know, I always try to communicate, like, what do you enjoy doing? I don't know, you know, what's your f fun zone or your comfort zone or, you know, I know what mine is. M mine is characters, monsters, for sure. Not at all environments, but I can do them. But I'm a bit miserable doing them. So I guess a long, make a long rant short. 
make sure that you practice being you. <laughs> Technical grind in all its glory, but don't forget who you are and what makes you have fun and what makes you enjoy the ride. Because it will make things a lot easier. Miguel, I'm so wise and old and... The Hero John, sounds good. Erika Rika, what up? <laughs> A sticky zone? This is interesting. Captain Boss, you're shitting on your love. I always find that interesting. You're always shitting on the thing you love the most. And you say, oh, I shouldn't love this. Oh, I'm so... I just, I see nothing but fun and enjoyment when you do this. And I don't see anything negative about it. I don't understand why you put yourself down constantly. You should, you should just draw more of it. Draw more and more and more complicated or more interesting ideas about it. You shouldn't wanting to do anything else. You should. That's where where you're happy. Do it. And and I always had this I, idea. Is like you should become undeniable in that sense that you know, like if someone's gonna want to hire someone doing robots, is you who they should hire to do robots. And there's a lot of robots who people who want robots out there. <laughs> you know. Look at Mobius or look at, you know, any insert famous artist's name here. They did what they loved so well that, you know, they are, you can't deny them, you know. I feel like being a character artist, you can draw and paint more than an environment or prop artist. I feel like they use a lot of 3D and photo passion. It depends, Bruno, but um, I wouldn't say no. I would say no. Uh, they use more uh, 3D base for scale and, and uh, negative spaces and distancing in environments because they need the they need to feel correct in a 3d space a character still needs 3d uh, but it's more contained i think that's the only difference uh, bruno not necessarily you can do environments with drawing you don't need to paint to the same degree just be really good at it and people will go like yeah that's great i'll use it <laughs> captain boss all right all right so again so this practice was to look at values simplify them and try to model the face by by truncating value ranges so we can start like getting a sense of volume getting a sense of color differences and the goal of this practice is to to stop yourself from using every little single value on the range so it's better to group the values together and have one one value to represent them rather than draw every single one and when you do, do when you draw the full range everywhere it's going to flatten out and confuse the painting so the idea of this practice is to force you to take a step back to to be bolder and and analyze better and try to to uh, form the forms better 
and the study is going to look ugly. You're not going to have a pretty study. But the the practice is what's necessary here. Uh, you don't necessarily need to use this reference if you don't want to. The practice itself is what's uh, important. Anyways, so study Monday done. Um, let's find a raid subject. Who is online? Hey, sneak you. Welcome to the end. And there's, you can do your own version of this practice, but the practice itself is what's important. It's to, to kind of simplify and understand the relationship between the volumes and make sure that you're bolder and stronger in your foundation and mark making and rendering so that you don't over render. You do clear distinctions, you understand what you're doing in a stronger foundation. So it's it's about the idea of it. Uh, it's about uh, practicing the thought rather than the end result, because the end result is going to look ugly, as you can see. But the information gained is what's important. All right, we're going to raid, outro, have a good one. See you tomorrow for 3D.